Hello everyone, welcome to this Nick from Top Notch Sports. And today we got a lot to discuss. Let's hop right into this thing. Why Eddie? Why Eddie, set? <laughs> Hello everyone, welcome this is Nick from Top Notch Sports. Today we're going to go over the 2023 Buffalo Bills salary review and we'll see the moves for 2023. In 2022, the Buffalo Bills under head coach Sean McDermott and quarterback Josh Allen finished a record of 13-3, and finishing first in the AFC East, but ultimately losing to the Cincinnati Bengals in the playoffs. This team has been knocking on the door for the last few years but has yet to kick the door down. Uh, I am a huge, huge fan of Josh Allen. I had him ranked as my number one quarterback coming out of the draft when he was drafted. Uh, I was one of the very few people that had that. I, don't, I really don't know many other people that had that. I just thought his talent was through the roof. I also like Lamar Jackson that year. Uh, th these two were my two guys that I thought had the most potential for sure. But I did have Allen ranked number one. And that's over Sam Darnold, Baker Mayfield, Josh Rosen, uh, you know, and we can keep going on, too. Lamar Jackson was that year. So there's a lot of guys that came out of that draft class. But, again, my number one guy, because the talent that he had, was quarterback Josh Allen. You give him Stephon Diggs, and this team's rocking and rolling. Now we look at it, though, and we still got to say, well, they're rolling. They're doing great during the regular season. But they're unable to knock that damn door down to get into the Super Bowl and possibly win one. When will this team get there? is a question we all have to ask ourselves. And hopefully, Sean McDermott and Josh Allen will figure that out in the next few years. With that being stated, this is a mock roll season, mock free agency, mock draft, so let's hop right into this thing. All right, here we are. So first things first, I want to direct you to the top left corner of the screen. You guys have negative $3.5 million in cap space. The guys on this screen right here are guys that are currently under contract. Uh, if you don't see somebody right now, it's because they're upcoming free agents and that you've got to extend them with a contract. But with negative three and a half million dollars, it's going to be very, very hard to do. Uh, you could save some money by cutting the guys in green. And if you cut the guys in red, you actually end up losing money. So it doesn't make any sense to do that. So a quick example, real fast. If you were to go out and cut Mitch Morse, you would save $6.4 million. If you were to cut Von Miller, you will lose $21.4 million. So, again, look at the screen. Let me know what you guys think. Again, guys with higher cap hits that you feel like that they might want to part ways with other guys that you might consider. But here's the issue that I'm going to mention right now. You already cut Naheem Hines. Okay, I'm just going to throw out a lot of guys. Mitch Morse, Teron Johnson. Okay, let's say you cut those three guys. You only save about 15 to $16 million. Then you got to take out the negative three and a half. What are you around? $10 million in cap savings for cutting three potential starters? It makes no sense to do that. So therefore, you know, there's no jarring guy here. There's nobody that I see that, you know, you can save $15 million and they play bad. It's highly unlikely you guys cut three guys to save a little bit of money. There are ways to work around the cap, and I'm sure the Buffalo Bills will do that. But again, in this series, we like to use a hard cap and try to make this as fair as possible. You see a question mark here next to Mitch Morse. This is because you guys literally do not have the interior offensive lineman under contract. We will plug anybody in that spot if there was somebody under contract. Unfortunately for you guys, you don't have nobody. That's why there's a question mark. So let me know in the comment section below who you would cut from here uh, and, and what's your strategy. But again, I'll do my prediction in a few slides from now. All right, here is our notable losses. So now these are the guys that are currently uh, due to be paid. They got to be paid. They're going to be upcoming free agents. With that being mentioned, you know, percent of stats play, we calculate this number by the percent of stats play the player plays when they're on the active game day lineup. If they're not activated for the game, and let's say the player was on the, you know, IR for 16 games this year, but the one game he was active for, he played 100% of the snaps, this number would say 100% of the snaps. So that's where it's a little bit flawed. You know, these numbers are flawed slightly. I just want to give you that pre-warning. 
So first things first, you got linebacker Tremaine Edmonds. He's expected conscious a four-year, $57.1 million deal. He played 91% of the snaps. Next guy, safety Jordan Poyer. He's expected conscious a three-year, $33 million deal. He played 95% of the snaps. Next guy, running back Tevin, Devin Singletary. He's expected conscious a three-year, $16.7 million deal. He played 67% of the snaps. And last but not least, offensive guard Roger Saffold. He's expected contract a one-year, $5.4 million deal, and he played 97% of the snaps. Well, now, with all this being mentioned, we got to say this. Typically, a good rule of thumb is guys that play a high percentage of the snaps and play well during those high percentage of the snaps with the same regime, that regime will most likely try to bring the players back if they have the cap space. For the Buffalo Bills, you guys have very limited cap space. You're in the negatives. So it's highly unlikely you're going to be able to make multiple signings. So one thing I can say right now that you could do off this list is possibly franchise tag a player. You can go into the negatives with a franchise tag. So you could franchise tag one of these players to a one-year deal. So let me know right now who you have franchise tag. Here's again, you can't sign nobody in free agency unless you're in the positives. So since you're in the negatives, unless you get into the positives, you can't sign nobody. And if you want to franchise tag somebody, there's no way in hell you're going to be able to save up 25 to $30 million to be able to sign some people on top of that. So which one of these players would you like to franchise tag? Again, let me know in the comment section below. Here we are, here, here are our potential targets. This is what I believe is going to happen, okay? And I'm sure there's going to be other things that happen. You know, there's ways to work around the cap, especially if you hire good accountants and stuff and people that do this for a living. But we're not going to sit here and do that for all 32 teams for this series. So what do we got? Well, you got negative $3.5 million in cap space, which means that you can't really sign nobody unless you cut a lot of players. But then if you cut a lot of players, you're probably just going to end up franchise tagging a guy anyway and begin in the negatives. So with all that being mentioned, we feel like before – the franchise tag deadline, which is before free agency, you guys are going to use your franchise tag on linebacker Tremaine Edmonds, which is going to be a one-year $20.9 million deal, which is a $20.9 million cap hit. Now, with that being mentioned, you guys have negative $24.4 million now, so you really can't make any signings after the franchise tag deadline if you decide to do this. Now, the other option would be franchise tagging Jordan Poyer, uh, but we just feel like it's more likely that you go out and you bring in Edmonds, uh, you know, a, a superstar linebacker, in our opinion, a uh, big guy, freak athlete. I just, I feel like he has a lot of potential. Poyer is getting up there a little bit in age. Uh, and on top of that, you got the Mar Hamlin. Let's hope that God he comes back. I don't know what his status is, but again, our theory was, be and remember, we started making this video before the injury too, uh, was that the Mar Hamlin was going to fill in that role. But again, right now, that's kind of up in the air. So here's what we got. You know, you got your team needs. Offensive guard, offensive tackle, linebacker, safety. Okay. So in the first round, we actually got you replacing Jordan Poyer with bringing in safety Brian Branch. Okay, you got Micah Hyde, you got Brian Branch, and hopefully DeMar Hamlin will be all right. There'll be three guys and two really young guys, okay, and Brian Branch and DeMar Hamlin. In the second round, we got you going out and drafting offensive guard Luke Weipler to fill in that guard need, which you literally don't have an offensive guard right now under contract. And last but not least, in the third round, we got you drafting linebacker Ventrell Miller. Okay, the only position here that we still feel like is a little bit of a need would be that offense tackle spot for, you know, just depth purposes too, okay? So right now, you look at this. We fill in your offensive guard need by drafting Luke Weipler in the second round. We fill in your linebacker need by franchise tagging Tremaine Edmonds and drafting Ventrell Miller. And we fill in that safety need by drafting Brian Branch. Now we're going to look at your 2023 expected lineup. Here is your 2023 expected lineup. First thing we're going to look at is that they're negative $22.4 million in cap space after these moves. But you look at this team here, and this is what we got. You know, we got orange and blue, okay? The guy in orange is the guy that we're re-signing. We're re-signing Tremaine Edmonds, and we're drafting Brian Branch in the first round. We're drafting Luke Weipler in the second round, and we're drafting Ventrell Miller in the third round. Making three starters like this in your, after one offseason. Plus, we're bringing back Tremaine Edmonds by that franchise tag. Now, you don't see a green, you don't see yellow. Green means we signed a player to free agency. We literally had no money to do that. Yellow means that a placeholder, a guy that we feel like that needs to be replaced almost immediately. We don't feel like you guys really have a placeholder on this team if these are the moves that you make. So you look at this team now, and I'm going to give you my prediction in about two seconds. But before I even do that, I just want to look at this team. You look at this team. Deion Dawkins, Luke Weipler, Mitch Morris, Ryan Bates, and Spencer Brown. That's a pretty dang solid offensive line. You got Dawson Knox at tight end, who you signed a huge extension to last season. Stephon Diggs, Gabriel Davis, Isaiah McKenzie, and a guy who I really like coming to last year's draft class, Khalil Shakir. Huge fan of his. Watch my scouting reports. I think he could be really special on his team. I also really like James Cook. And again, with him being one of the only guys on the contract next year, he will most likely be the starter. That's why you drafted him. 
Okay, now you look at the defensive side of the ball. Ed Oliver, Greg Russo, Vaughn Miller. Between Vaughn Miller and Greg Russo coming off the edge, that is a dominant duo. You look at your cornerback room, Kair Elam, Tredavious White, and Ter Teron Johnson. Those are three pretty decent corners, right? Nothing changes there. Tremaine Edmonds, we're bringing him back through a franchise tag. Matt Milano, who's been a superstar for you guys for a few years now. And Ventrell Miller, a rookie guy that we're coming in and plugging him in right away. And then our safety room, Brian Branch, Micah Hyde, and hopefully DeMar Hamlin. Three good safeties with Brian Branch and hopefully DeMar Hamlin, who I was really high on coming out of the draft, uh, being your future pieces for this team. Overall, I really don't think this team gets worse. You're losing Jordan Poyer. You're bringing in Brian Branch. You're bringing in linebackers, right? You're bringing back Edmonds. You're bringing in Ventrell Miller, and you're bringing in an offensive guard. Does this team really get worse? I don't think so. James Cook, year two. Khalil Shakir, year two in this system, in this scheme. Hopefully, we'll be able to take great strides forward, only give Josh Allen extra weapons to use. Again, what's my prediction now? Well, this is what I got. The Buffalo Bills have been knocking on the door now for the last few years. To get over the hump, they got to do something special. Do I feel like we're doing something special in this? No. But the more years together, more years of continuity and consistency should only help this team out. But with the AFC East constantly getting better, with the New York Jets looking like they may try to bring in someone, whether it's Derek Carr or Aaron Rodgers, with the New England Patriots bringing in Bill O'Brien, and the Miami Dolphins, they may be upgrading the quarterback position, but if they don't, still, year two under Mike McDaniel. All these teams in the AFC East are also going to be looking to improve. With all the other teams improving, that does not mean the Buffalo Bills are going to decline. But I do believe it's going to be very tough to get that 13-3 and record like they did in 2022. With that being stated, I'm slotting the Bills out, winning the AFC East, finishing a record of 11-5, and five, but ultimately making the playoffs and hopefully making that Super Bowl push. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. I would love to hear your feedback. Again, there's not much we can do because of cash space, but hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Until next time, we'll see you guys soon. Peace. We are Built Better.